The cook, the Tenzo, Dario, at Bankai, Zen Master Bankai's monastery. Zen Master Bankai was a very famous uh, Zen teacher in the 17, 1800s. He saw that his teacher was getting old, and he decided that he wanted to take good care of his old teacher. And so, in order to sustain his health, he gave him fresh miso, fresh fruit, food. The teacher noticed that the Tenzo, the cook, was giving him special food. And he was giving the other people in the training monastery a very different kind of food. So he called Dario in. And Dario, the cook, said, you know, here's why I'm doing this. You know, I want to preserve your health. I want you to, to be strong. I want you to be able to teach the Dharma. It's important. And Bankai had an interesting response. He said, well, then you think I shouldn't eat at all. And with this, he entered his room and locked his door. An interesting response. Now, with every one of these stories, it's important we are all different. So this is not a right answer or a wrong answer. This is a, a story that comes out of a particular situation. Now, Bankai, one of the great Zen masters of his era, especially when he's a mature person like that, is always teaching, always teaching his Number one vow is to liberate, to help his students find liberation. So his number one vow is really more important to him, it seems like, than whether he has a, right, a particular kind of meal or not. So he is away teaching this student. Now, the student's job is to be compassionate, you know, to, pay, to pay attention, to, be, to honor uh, people who are leading, helping. And the teacher's job is to also be self-sufficient, to not allow any kind of self-aggrandizement to creep in. So, Bankai heard this story, I want to take care of your health, I want to give you better food. He said, well then, I'm not going to eat at all. Well, you think I shouldn't eat? And went into his room, closed the door. Now, you can imagine what that would be like if someone was a, a, a devoted student, they were a, a person in, uh, in responsibility of the cook, they were integral to the whole monastery, and suddenly they got, in a way, slammed down. All their good intention was suddenly just swept away, ignored. And in this case, this Tenzo, this, this chef, Dario, was very perturbed by this. And he felt that he had done something wrong. And so his mind of, of good and bad, his mind of, I want to do something right and get praise for it, in his mind of, I did something wrong and I'm not going to get praised for it, was very activated. And so he sat outside Bankai's door. Remember, this is ancient Japanese, Japanese times. He sat outside Bankai's door, just waiting and calling to him, saying, please forgive me, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Whatever way he did that. And Bankai ignored him. And this went on apparently for a week. For a week, this person who felt he had done a grievous harm based on the action, sat outside Bankai's door. One day, one of Bankai's other attendants called into him and said, <clears throat> you may be all right, old teacher, but this, this poor monk, he can't go out without food forever. The monk apparently had fasted also. And with that, Bankai opened the door, 
and smiling. Now, we all have interpretations of these kind of things, this little story, but we don't really know what was going on. It may be that the teacher said, I want to do a fast. It's time for me to clean out my system. I'd like to do a fast. I'd like to, to let my digestive system rest. And just at that moment, the Tenzo came. And so an opportunity to teach him and an opportunity to engage the fast that he already wanted to do just doop, came together synchronistically. May have been. So what could someone learn from that? They could learn to look at the mind of praise and blame. They could look at the mind of right and wrong. They could look at the mind of, I want you to be the way I think you should be. They could look at the mind of impatience. They could look at the mind of humility. And most Zen temples in the old days, in the last century and before, if you wanted to enter a, a Zen monastery, a, a training monastery, you had to go and set out on the steps in front of the temple for seven days. And what they would do, uh, at least in the Rinzai temples, is they would give you, give the monks, they would ordain them, give them a set of robes, and the robes were a dark blue indigo color. And they would sit out in front of the temple for seven days, and they'd have to sit with their head bowed down on their hands. And apparently the robes uh, dye was not so fixed. And so at the end of this time, uh, they would look like ghosts. They would look all blue and, and pale, minor aside. So anyhow, this Tenzo was tested. It was tested. We hope you learned something from it. And Bankai came out bright and smiling. So he had a good time. Every situation, in every situation, there's something to learn. There's no situation where that's not possible. So whether we sit outside the door of the Capitol building or sit outside the door of our parents or sit outside the door of a hospital, there's something there to learn. Maybe so.